You gotta stay in the driver's seat of your life. You gotta command your life. You have to grab that steering wheel. Using God as your GPS. You gonna have to grab that steering wheel and take control of what you're doing. Take responsibility for your actions. Hold yourself accountable. Give permission to the people around you to hold you accountable. God loves us all. God loves us so much. He will send people around us to bless us and show us how much he loves us. Help guide us. Help feed us. We got to learn how to receive that love. We got to stay healthy enough to receive that love. Feed our good wolf and know how to give it back. Know how to stay in community. God loves us. God loves us. J. Floyd speaks life. Yeah. Man. Woo. Welcome everybody, man. Thank you for joining us. Um... Thank you for joining me, man. Welcome back. This is uh, the first episode of season two. Season two of J. Floyd Speaks Life. I want to thank everybody for listening, man. I cannot believe how many um, listens this got and views for when it's when I uploaded it to the YouTube channel, man. Um, so I just want to kind of give you a quick preview. Season two, man, I'm, I'm really, um, I kind of held off. I didn't want to rush into this season. You know, I was really excited after coming off last season. Uh, then I went straight into filming the movie, uh, Mike Berry's movie, uh, State of Mind. And I, w- I was super excited. I had so many ideas about who I wanted to interview, the ideas I wanted to touch on. Um, but I didn't want to rush it, man. So I was like, you know, I'm going to wait until I, you know, like until the New Year is rolling around. And then we can really get season two popping. So Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, welcome back to season two. J. Floyd Speaks Life, man. Um, I am J. Floyd, the author of The Driver's Seat, How to Get Out of the Back Seat of Your Life and Driving Your God-Given Purpose. Uh, me, I am an empowerment speaker, an author, and a life coach. I'm a healer overall, man. I am also the host of Code M Radio, which you can hear every Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. on WOVU 95.9 FM. Uh, my focus is on helping people make that journey to healing through some real issues, man. I, I like to get down to the dirt, man. No sugarcoating done. I don't mind being the challenger in life. You know, I I believe in uh, our best way of success and getting in God's will is to embrace a lifestyle of challenge. You know, we all need challengers, and most of the things that we get frustrated about are not things that are against us per se, but are pushing us back towards our purpose, strengthening us. And that's not always fun, man. So, but it's always necessary. So if that's the role needed, then so be it. We put in that work. Uh, That's what I do. Check me out on Facebook at J Floyd Speaks Life. Check me out on Twitter at J Floyd Speaks Life and on IG. My handle is J Floyd Speaks And uh, this podcast here, which is broadcast everywhere you can find podcasts, including my YouTube channel. So uh, go out to my YouTube channel for J. Floyd Speaks Life and subscribe to that right now. Uh, Also, if you are interested in being a sponsor of this show, hit me up at J-A-Y-F-L-O-Y-D-1 at gmail.com. That's jfloyd1 at gmail.com. And uh, let me know what's going on, man. We got some uh, some some great moves coming up, collaborative moves uh, coming up with Code M. Got uh, a lot of people that I'm working with and trying to bring things into fruition in 2020 and see what we can do to uh, further this message of healing because this is where we are as a community, right? You know, you look at all the politicians and you look at, you know, everybody's talking about where we need to go in the future, whether it's the economy, et cetera. What we really need is healing, no matter where we go in the economy, uh, no matter whether there's a recession, no matter whether there's a, you know, a, a boom, a, a, a big, uh, you know, everything's going fine for everybody. We still need 
to do a lot of healing from the pain we have in the past and we'll continue to create for each other because it's just part of the challenge of life, right? So uh, with no further ado, I'm chilling here in the family room like I always do, man. Uh, again, thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to kick this off, man, with a, with a, with a lesson of empowerment. Um, so out right now, this, this session, this, this, uh, segment, this speech, this topic is called oxygen, oxygen. And, uh, it's something that was really on my spirit. I moved this in front of a few other topics that we were going to do, um, and like I said, I still have some interviews. I have some really, really great interviews, man. I know last season, you know, we had Clotia Mack. We had uh, Kelly Parker. We had my man Jeremy Holmes. We had Chef Eric Wells. Uh, we had my wife Nia Floyd on here. Man, we had some really good stories and interviews. And we have even more coming up this season, man, and some really big ones. Um, so I can't wait for y'all to peep that out. But uh, right now, let's get into this first one. This first session called Oxygen, man. It's a life coach session. So let's roll. Jay One. Floyd speaks life. Jay Floyd is a husband, father, and follower of Christ. After enduring several tragedies at an early age, he faced depression and anxiety for years. After being led down the path of healing himself, he realized that his purpose is to use his words, his life, and his testimony to help others make similar journeys to healing through God's love. Jay is a Christian self-help author, speaker, and life coach. On this podcast, he will sit down with people you may know through TV or social media, walking in their purpose as they talk about what makes them who they are and simply speak about life on Jay Floyd Speaks Life. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody, man? I love y'all, man. I love y'all. I love the fact that y'all tune in. Um, I listen to a lot of Gloria Castillas. Shout out to Gloria Castillas. Is, uh, I, I really like um, the fact that so many people nowadays tune in and are looking for uh, improvement. You know, they're looking to do more with their life. You know, my life coaching program, man, you know, um, I usually carry about three clients. I'm probably I'm expanding that right now to right around five. So I'm looking to carry five clients in 2020. So I do have a couple of openings. So get at me at that email at G at J Floyd one at Gmail dot com or just uh, reply to any of my posts, man, and say I'm interested. I'm trying to see what's going on. I want to know. What this is all about, man. I got a I got a next level in my life that I want to reach, you know. Um, you know, speaking of my program, man, big big shout out, huge shout out to uh, my my first. You know, I've been doing this for a couple of years ago, and I I've restructured my program in 2019 that it actually has uh, term limits, so um, uh, there you can actually graduate from my program, uh, so. I, re I had recently had um, a graduate, um, a, a, actually a couple of graduates, but I got a testimonial back from one of my grads, man. This was uh, a, a person who uh, we really did some great work, man. We we really dug deep throughout, uh, into her life and identified some areas where she uh, was being held back, man. And uh, we put together a program, and she did that work, and I'm proud of her. Um her, her testimonial says this, working with Jay was a true blessing. We opened and explored areas of my life that were creating invisible barriers to my success. This was huge for me because I couldn't see how my experiences shaped my perspective of myself and how I approached life. I just knew I was tired of wasting time and not tapping into my full potential. Being able to work with Jay and clearly identify some of those issues gave me a stronger platform to grow from. He created an atmosphere that was warm and safe, which allowed me to freely open up and acknowledge some very tough areas of my life. I'm forever, I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. Man, you know what? 
that one that warms my heart, man, because, you know, person to person, man, taking part in somebody's healing really uh, can help you heal, can help you grow. And this is my purpose, man. So the further I step into my purpose, the better it makes me feel. And it, I love hearing that story, man. And like I said, I have term limits on the program. You can re, you can re up, you know, uh, the next year. But uh, it doesn't end our communication. You know, I still keep tabs and keep uh, contact with my clients, man. And we build, man, and we talk about it. You know, because the whole thing for me is a natural growth, man. It's not like, you know, this real stiff thing. No, this is a natural growth where you learn better relationship building and that includes a relationship with your coach which includes accountability responsibility uh calling for you to step out of your comfort zone all of that stuff is no different than a personal trainer man in fact it can it can uh you know be an, an even more uh um personal uh situation because you are you're, you're you're really opening up some things that you're going to use in interactions and relationships overall, including with that person. You know, you're not going to walk up to your personal trainer and arm wrestle them. You know what I mean? Or or run into them in public and, uh, you know, challenge them to a push up contest, you know. But your life coach, you can keep in contact with and continue to exhibit those traits that you built up, that you work to build, that communication, that that accountability, you can continue to exhibit that through that relationship. So I think that's the one of the best parts about it. So shout out to her, man. Um, she did her thing. You know, today's speech, man, I really want to talk about today's topic. It's called oxygen. Oxygen, man. You know, I was thinking about this um, because it's something that's been on my mind for a while. One of the things, you know, you may I'm, I know you may have heard speakers or pastors deliver sermons about the airplane oxygen mass story. Right? You you hear this story about how when an airplane is hit in turbulence or hits trouble and the oxygen mass fall out, you know, the instruction from the uh from the crew is always Please put your mask on first before attempting to put the mask on other people and include, you know, the example that we like to talk about is your child. You know, if you're if your child is sitting right next to you, you know, let's say they're five years old man. they they rely on you for a lot of things, man. And now y'all are both in this situation where there's trouble and oxygen mass falls out man so you you know your first temptation is man let me do anything i can to 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 help them let me do the first thing i can which is let me do that man let me get this on because even if they survive and i die then I'm, I'm fine with that that's our natural instinct you know but that doesn't work in most scenarios you know maybe in a drastic case you know but in most scenarios, and that's why in that scenario, they, the best case, they tell you, is to put yours on first. Because you can't properly help them if you are not okay. I want us to really, really focus on that, man. And I mean, this I want to take that and apply that to our marriage, our relationship with our spouse, our relationship with our friends, our relationship to our children our relationship to our parents. We cannot truly love and help grow other people if we are not okay, if we don't have a healthy lifeline, if we don't have oxygen, right? Oxygen is one of the most basic um, uh, fuels of life, right? We take it into our lungs, you know, trees, you know, we kick out carbon, uh, dioxide trees take the carbon dioxide turn it into oxygen so there's that cycle right we get our oxygen without it we die without oxygen the brain dies very quickly you know no one can hold their breath very long because it's that important to us right so in this case we're talking about the things that are vitally important to life we're talking about love we're talking about the, the, the fabric of life, your, your self-esteem, your worth, all of that. 
you have to breathe for yourself before you can give CPR to anybody else. You walk into a CPR class and they, you know, they on a dummy. They got the, the dummy set up and they're teaching you how to do it. You know, they, they might say, hey, pump this many times. And then, you know, you breathe, you squeeze, squeeze their cheeks. You breathe. Listen, you cannot pump this many times. If your arms are broken, if your lungs are not working, if you got asthma and emphysema and you came in there with an oxygen tank on and you barely making it, you can't give CPR. How are we going to help anybody else if our oxygen flow is not healthy? So the key, if you are married and you love your spouse, love is an active word. That's an action word. It's a verb. It means I'm going to make a choice to do things, hard things. Love is a principle. It's a, it's a discipline. It's a standard. It means I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and make sure I'm going to go do work. I'm going to work out. Things that are not fun, things that are painful, things that make you sweat, uncomfortable. I'm going to do those things to stay healthy because I love my spouse. Which means I want to engage in the discipline of doing what it takes to give them proper love which means the first thing i gotta do if i say i love you the only way i can really engage in that and fulfill that is if i love me and i don't mean love in a narcissistic way i don't mean love in a worship way i don't mean love in a um a pampering way I'm talking about love in a basic, fundamental, I have a healthy relationship with, and I'm willing to engage in the discipline of honoring. I got to do that to myself first. I got to have a healthy relationship with me, and I got to engage in the discipline of honoring who God created me to be my temple of my body, my temple of my mind, my temple of my emotions, the temple of my experience. I got to respect and honor and love my experience. My failures, my worst days, my hurts, my pains. I got to forgive that stuff. I got to get past it. I got to process it. That's loving. When you love your spouse, it means you forgive them you process what they do they don't always do stuff that makes you happy but you process it and you work through it and you keep coming back where you put them up and you see a, you see them when they walk in the door and you still smile regardless of everything that y'all been through regardless of the, the bad things they might have said to you or the bad things you said to them or the horrible things y'all them went through together or the times where y'all were not happy together they walk in a room and you still smile because it's like, I love you. I engage in the discipline of processing everything and coming back to I love you. I honor you. So I got to do that to myself or I can't do it to anyone else. It's got to come from me first. So what's the way to do this? What is the best way? So if, uh, let's apply, like I said, I, I applied this to marriage. We can apply this to our children. The best way for me, I, uh, I see a lot of parents, uh, especially that I life coach, they'll say, hey, my, my kids mean everything to me. Everything. You know where that comes from? Our society has put us behind the eight ball because we have unhealthy relationships so much. We have so much conflict that we are in a fight or flight Step, and we're in a fight or flight reaction to a lot of things even parenting the moment our kids are born we're like it's us against the world these kids mean everything i'm going to engage in warfare to protect them but that's not the best thing for them our kids need healthy love they need an advocate and the way that they get healthy love is from healthier people so the first thing i have to do is say Honoring God through my existence means everything. 
Because if I truly love my kids, I got to do that step first. If I skip that step, that's when I'm all out of balance. And that's what we see all across our society right now. Well-intentioned people. You know what they say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. A lot of parents, my parents included, every intention in the world was good. But how are you going to get there? How do you execute the, the, what, are the end, what are the means to that end? So how do we love our loved ones? We get healthy. We treat our own issues. We catch our own breath. Yeah. If I want to give them CPR, hopefully they don't need CPR, but we know sometimes they will. But that means I got to have some healthy lungs. So what does this look like for us? You know, we talked a few things a little bit about marriage. What about parents? Parents, it means your life does not begin and end with your children. Your, our children are, are affected far more by the way we take in oxygen for ourselves than any CPR we can do for them. And let's, and let's face it, man. Let's be real. We bring them into this world. We provide the environment for them. Most of the CPR they're going to need is based on issues that we have and that we have brought them into. So the best thing we can do is, is to heal. Even if we're in the process of healing, that shows them what it looks like to fight and process healing. Because they're going to get to the point as an adult where they got to do it too. It's no different than in a marriage where we show the best thing we can do for our children is to show them what it looks like to work through a marriage. Even on the days you're not happy with each other. This is how you can still get through it and return back to the table tomorrow even stronger. Not fall apart. So for our children, man, we got to make sure that one, we're getting proper oxygen. So as they're growing up, they're seeing us breathe healthy. They're seeing us engage in activities that are healthy. If a child grows up with a parent who eats right and works out all the time, they'll see those things. So we got to do that same thing when it comes to loving ourselves. If they see us not loving ourselves constantly, every time we, we, you know, we get to, we, we never chase our dreams or we constantly bring up that thing when we were 16 or when we were 21 and we dropped out of college and we constantly keep bringing that thing up and all of that guilt and shame on us keeps coming up and they see that. And they, they know they feel that and they start to regurgitate the same thing. They start to regurgitate the same traits. So the first time they feel some guilt and shame, they could be eight years old. They're going to hold on to it because they're like, man, daddy does that. Mommy does that. Mommy got her thing that she can't get over. And here's mine. Next thing you know, they're walking around saying, hey, you know, that thing, I can't, hey, remember that thing that happened? You know, hey, I, I, I thought I was going to be good at this. I used to want to do this, but that thing happened. They're affected far more by the way we take in oxygen. If they see us, even if we got a couple of them things, but they see us start to work with it. They see us, you know, get with somebody, get with a coach, a therapist, uh, a pastor. They see us start to work through that stuff, man. That can help them. Then the, the example we give them is, man, I got this thing that I'm struggling with, but watch me go to work on it. Watch me work. They're far more affected by the way we take in oxygen. So let's heal. Let's start working on that. You know, let's not make them the beginning and end of our life. I said this before on one of my social media posts. The moment we have kids is not the end of our life. Far from it. You know, 
I know, yeah, I know, I know. Little, little, little Jamar and and Jadavion, they go to uh, they they playing football or basketball and they dope. I know, I know, they doing their thing, man. Oh, they better than me. They better than I ever was. Okay, I got you. They're dope, and that's great, man. That's beautiful. But guess what? Your life still has purpose. You yourself still have purpose. You got work to do. You still got healing to do. You can't just live vicariously through them. That's not going to redeem you. What you're doing is handing them the mantle to have to heal. You do the healing. No. Your life is not over. Your kids might be in college right now, crushing it, straight killing it. Man, Ivy League, HBCU, they doing a thing. Everything I ever hoped and dreamed of, they're already doing it. I got you. But guess, guess what? You still got a purpose. You still got greatness. You still got work to do. We can't make them the beginning and end of our life. Our children are far more affected by the way we take in oxygen. Our spouses, our friends. It's all about how we take in oxygen. If our system is broken, if we constantly choking. And listen, listen, let me just touch on this thing with the kids one more time. Because a lot of times we really just blowing in their faces. I mean, we're really not giving them CPR. We think, oh, man, I got to do this. Man, uh, you know, they're, they're growing up in a, a shared parenting situation. Oh, man, I feel so bad for them. Out of guilt, let me do this. Oh, I got divorced. Out of guilt, let me do this. Let me help them. They need this help. Listen, the majority of the time, they don't need that help that way. What they need to do is see us heal. Don't blow in their face. That's not CPR. Or in some cases, some people will, we're not even blowing in their face. We're just fanning them like an Egyptian pharaoh or something. They don't need that worship. They're not going to, they're not going to benefit from that worship. We want to give our kids what they need, but without a healthy system for ourselves, we don't know what that looks like. We get out of balance. So listen, uh, what does that look like? Single parents love out of guilt a lot of times. I was raised by uh, two of them. Um, you know, my dad remarried, but still divorced parents, they were doing that. I have experienced that. I've experienced doing that myself. Doing that myself. Loving my child that way out of guilt, you know, or sometimes parents, we try to relive our youth for our kids, man. Well, I dropped a ball. But man, look at look at little Shannon. Look at look at uh look at little Lisa. She she look at little Jordan. Let me let me let me modernize my names, man. I know how to names be modern nowadays, man. Little Jordan, Jaden. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing, man. But that doesn't cancel us out. We can't relive our youth through our kids. That's their life. Their experience. It has nothing to do with ours. It's not a well, it has something to do with ours, but it's not ours. We still have a life that's continuing. Right. What else does that look like? Parents who were abused can fall into the trap of loving through abusive means. Parents who were harshly loved can do the same. Parents who were uh, loved through guilt and shame will relive that. Right. The same can be said for any relationship. Marriages suffer the same way. Imbalance in marriage. Can look like this, right? Somebody who worships their spouse. That's not healthy love. We have to receive the healthy love. So, or somebody who does the opposite, somebody who refuses to submit to the fact that they are married. Man, I'm still going out. I'm still doing my thing. I'm still going to be out with my dudes. I'm still going to be out with my girls. I'm still going to maintain connections with all these other. I'm I'm not going to conform to what this society thinks I should do. A lot of times that's out of resentment and out of unhealth before. Right. Because getting our own oxygen is vital. Now, I don't mean 
that to do this you got to go off and be selfish i know a lot of things a lot of you know social media and all of that stuff a lot of articles will tell you to do that or you better go get you spa day spa day vacation day mecation staycation whatever listen I'm going I'm to break it down real simple, man. It's five things to how to get, get your oxygen up, man. Five things. And this is one of the things you need to focus on. This is not selfish. This is loving. This is loving. And in order to love, it starts with us, right? Number one, learn your love language and tell the people around you what it is. Learn your love language and tell the people around you what it is. Uh, get that book by Dr. Gary Chapman, The Five Love Languages. He's got like, like 20 versions of them. Shout out to Dr. Gary Chapman. I want to be like you one day, right? Uh, but that book is dope. The book is deep. Go get it. Figure out what your primary love languages are and tell the people around you what it is. Don't expect people around you to be mind readers, right? Tell them what it is. Tell them who you are. Communicate. Number two, get you a coach, man. And this is not an advertisement. Well, it can be. You can sign up with me. Um, like I said, I have two slots open. But once those slots are filled, I don't know. But, you know, there's a lot of coaches around, man. And it doesn't even have to be a life coach. It could also be a counselor, a therapist. It depends on what you need. Psychologist, uh, uh, pastor, minister. It depends on what you need. But I would say a lot of things that a lot of times we're dealing with this unhealed hurt it's not it's not easy at all to do it by yourself you need someone to, you need a fresh pair of eyes someone else to walk through that dirt with you you know there's a reason why it's stuck back there in the dirt all right so number two is get you a coach number three set some healthy boundaries many times the people and the situations that we allow right Again, this is this is the this is the opposite of what a lot of social media posts are. A lot of social media posts say, I'm cutting this person off, this person that, this hater that, this person that. Listen, I'm putting the focus on self. A lot of times the people and situations that we allow around us are keeping us unhealthy. Now, keep in mind, I'm saying this is not um you can't control other people. You control yourself. That's why boundaries, you read the book Boundaries. The boundaries are for you. You can't set a boundary on somebody else. That's asking for misery. You set a boundary on yourself. What are you willing to tolerate? What are you willing to be around? People who are unhealthy themselves could be breathing off you. They could be breathing your air. Friends, parents, spouses, etc., Sucking the oxygen out of the room. Many times this stuff is unconscious, so I'm not saying it's malicious, but we can do a whole nother show on boundaries. But man, you better start speaking up when you know somebody or you recognize somebody around you is doing something toxic. You will never heal if you don't. I don't care if it's your mom. You owe it to yourself to be like, Ma, listen, can I talk to you for a minute? In all due respect, with all due respect, listen, this, when you say that, this is what, it, this is how it's hitting me. And it's been hitting me like that since I was a child. And I'm not trying to fight with you, Ma. I'm not trying to fight with you, Dad. I'm not trying to fight with you, Unc. But listen, auntie, I want to tell you in all honesty and with all due respect, this is how it's hitting me. So I would like if we can work through this and if we cannot work through this, I'm going to enforce my boundary. You're not going to yell at me. You're not going to treat me a way I don't want to be treated. I will take myself out of the situation and provide plenty space. Plenty space, right? You'll never heal if you don't have those conversations. So number three is set some healthy boundaries. Number four, get on your journey, man. You got to love yourself. I ain't talking about spa days. 
I'm talking about those journeys back to the times in your life where you got hurt, where you got torn apart and learn to forgive yourself, man. They say most of us end up stuck at the point in time where we receive the least love. So with that being said, look back for you. When was that? And what do you need to do to get past it, process it, right? Because listen, I mean, it could have been a horrible situation. Then I've heard a number of them, you know, in my time as a life coach and as a friend and as a counselor, as 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 a counselor and mentor, I've heard a lot of stories and been through my own horrible stories. So and here's the thing. A lot of times there was other people in these in these experiences. These are not things you did to yourself or went through by yourself. But the thing is, you are the one who you have to live with out of that situation. Those other people may not be around. You're going to be there and have to live with yourself. So you have to go back to that day and try to find a way to process it. Start having uh, healthier relationships with the past versions of you. So you can learn to breathe some oxygen, man. Because then when you do that, you can enjoy you. Get moving in your passions. Get moving in your purpose, man. Start, start, hey, man, you, I used to love to boom, boom, boom. All right, I'm about to get into doing that. Let me, uh, let me network with so-and-so. And let me get that going on. You know, instead of being frozen and locked in a box, You know, when you do this, then you can properly love your spouse, your kids, your friends, your family. They get healthier love from you. You know why? Because you're cleansed of that resentment. Because you didn't feel fulfilled. You're not looking to them to do it. You're cleansed of that guilt. Because you've forgiven yourself. You've moved past that. So you don't have to love them out of guilt. You start to cleanse your love, man. You get good, clean oxygen. And once you can do that, man, then you start to breathe. And you start to see life differently and your perspective changes. Now held back by so many chains behind you. Oxygen. Yeah. How that feel, man? We're going to take a deep breath right now. <sighs> Be watching my man, Funk Roberts, man. He, uh, I like to watch his YouTube videos, man. The over 40 alpha, man. Yeah, I'm over 40. Shout out to the over 40 crew. Be your age, man. Be your age. Represent your age. But, you know, I watch it. You know, I do, I do Funk Roberts over 40 alpha workout. And, you know, he always says, uh, you know, to get your air While you're working out, you should breathe like you're smelling a rose. Breathe through your nose and out of your mouth like you're smelling a rose. (sighs) Smell them roses, man. That's what we're going to do in life. We're going to keep healing. We're going to keep doing the work. And we're going to smell the roses, man. So Thank you for joining me for another episode. Welcome back to season two. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate you and come and join me again, man. Uh, we'll have another episode rolling out. All right, I'll let you. One.